What's up guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're talking about common problems that arise when designing a standing seam metal roof system. Everything from the initial building design to materials, substrate, location, and more. And today I've got Lori reynolds Morrow and Dave Stubbs from the Sheffield Metals Architectural and Technical Departments. Thank you guys for being here. So Sheffield offers design assistance, engineering support, all kinds of technical support through the entire process of a standing seam metal roofing project. And you guys have worked on projects all over the country and beyond. So Lori, tell me a little bit about that early phase with the designer. You know, what kind of questions are you asking them? It's, um, and it's always an honor to be called in at that early um, design because Dave and I can tell you the stories that what happens when we're not. So going on that premise, and it's not so much the questions that I'll be asking because I just let the energy come to me. I let them tell me what their dreams were, what their visions were. And then we start to polish it and kind of pull it into the design of the standing seam metal roof, you know, without bruising too many egos along the way. But the questions will be, and I've learned this from our warranty department and technical team, is how is that water getting off the roof? So it seems basic to us, but when you are in a design stage of mind and you're listening to your client, it may get a little skewed at that point. So yes, that's usually the first one is the water getting off that roof because we sometimes have been handed projects and um, it's definitely not designed that way. So uh, it's a wonderful item to be listening for. And then if we have to, we have to ask is there a reason why you wanted the standing seams in that orientation that you're showing us? So, yeah, tell me more about that. You know, when it comes to actually shedding the water off the building, you know, what are some possible pitfalls that, you know, can occur? So, you know, when we start getting into lower slope designs, a lot of time start asking the questions. It leads to a, a harder conversation. Like, like you said, how's the water getting off? If we have an upper roof draining to a lower roof, if the upper roof is a 612 and which is you know pretty steep, and the lower the lower roof section is a two twelve. Is it designed to take that? And then is it designed to take that water load? How much how much water's coming off there? Let me ask this: When we move on from that phase of you know how the water is shedding, you know what's kind of the next step when it comes to designing a metal roof? Are we talking about deck substrates, materials? You know what's next? I believe that what would be next, um, getting right into the materials would be steel or aluminum typically. And of course we know that, you know, uh, our radar would come up immediately if we know that the project is uh, near a body of salt water. And generally it comes down to a series of questions. Location, what are you trying to achieve? Which builds more into the assembly. And then there are certain selections or, you know, check the boxes kind of a thing. What are you trying to um, deliver to the customer? What's the substrate going to be attached to? And those are the questions that under a, a better philosophic answer to what they want. Lori, along those same lines of what Dave is saying, you know, what are some of the problems that can occur if maybe the wrong choice is made? You know, if uh, the wrong seam type is chosen below a 212 or um, the wrong material is chosen in the wrong location. Talk to me about some of those common problems that could happen. Well, at least um, in, in the design phases, it's typically not a problem at that point because we're still fluid, we're still in the design. And if it requires that, you know, we, um, the architectural department backed up by technical, that we get in front of the architect's client and explain uh, the reasoning behind uh, how we're taking them down another path, always welcome to do that. In fact, very, very open. We find ourselves also just by way of that discovery phase when we're in the early design phases um, is to hear more from the architect and possibly even the building owner at that time, um, like Dave had said, what their vision was so that we can, we can answer those at that point. That's typically... Um, at this stage, it's still more, it's a discovery on our part and discovery on their part. So, and typically they're open to, to anything that we have to tell them, guiding them towards, this is a steeper pitch. You've chosen an incorrect profile, um, you know, so that we're, our requirements are all lined up that way. Sure. Cause it could turn into problems down the road, you know, if they're not addressed in this early phase, which is the benefit of, of having a Sheffield metals 
come in during that early part of the design phase, especially for someone who's new to metal? Yes, and we're yeah. we're typically able to determine that as well. And you know, most firms, I mean, here we are now in the 21st century, most firms have already been designing uh, with metal. It's more uh, are we are we talking to the team that has that experience? So, and you can usually find that out if you keep your ears open during these uh, conversations. Absolutely. Dave, talk to me a little bit about the engineering and weather tight warranty support. Um, that Sheffield uh, can provide during that design phase and beyond into the project. We have a lot of conversations with contractors about, hey, yeah, we've got the roof, but what's going on the wall? You know, let's let's make sure we get a good tie and let's make sure that that um, envelope is secured because that's really the baseline for water infiltration is that that envelope, whatever's coming down the wall needs to go over the top of what's going on the roof. So that's that's always a concern. That's one of my main concerns because most of these guys know what's going on the roofing but they don't know how to integrate the stucco and the brick and the roofing and, and all components. And we have some, some remedies for a lot of, if we know, if, if they enlighten us as to what they need. And we also know that during the design and development of the project, within its design criteria, things change. Things change and it's construction. And so we have to be you know, careful you know, not to dictate too many things, the right questions at the right time to make sure that that that's developed. Um, the weather tight warranty department tries to make sure that all the components and apparatuses that are used are you know sufficiently secured. You know, what are some of the common problems that might occur uh, with local codes, engineering requirements? Uh, you know, when we're talking about this design. So you know, a lot of the stuff that we do deal with um, is, is it's different all over the country. And thank goodness, we one of the most um, complicated scenarios is the wonderful state of Florida. Some of the codes um, are a little bit crazy. Fort Collins, uh, northern Colorado, they've got this scale for load that increases towards the mountains. And so you have to be careful what you're designing and what's, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on and what that design criteria is. Another service that our architectural department provides is that magic realm that we walk into when they are picking the color. So we also provide, because sometimes an architect has a client, but the client has a design review board that is going to, to you know, grill them on the color choices. And we will do, we will jump through all the hoops to help them because we won't make the color choice, but we will help them with all the options they have towards that. We'll, we'll help as they make their color storyboard. I mean, we will do everything to make that process as smooth as possible. And it's because of our commitment and our belief of designing with metal is the way to go for, for any of these um, clients that are in that are, are kind of um, not trapped, but, but, um, owing to uh, answering to design review boards. We can, we can help them with that. Is there anything else that we missed uh, when we're talking about common problems when it comes to designing a standing seam metal roof? So go through and we, you know, do the, do the deep dig into the plans and try to find out what they're trying to do with insulation. That kind of builds uh, upon what that assembly is going to, be, whether it's wood frame, steel, Structure, and then we start getting into what the roof's going to be. It's, it's going to be steel deck with uh, poly ISO on top of it to achieve whatever insulatory value that we need. And that builds a criteria on, on what we can perform and at what level we can perform. With every question, with every um, assembly, you know, we can, we can sort of anticipate what the design could create. That standing seam, everybody, it, you know, standing seam is kind of an umbrella category as far as what it looks like. But when you when you really do the deep dive, there are certain categorically different processes and installations for the different assemblies uh, when we're dealing with standing seam metal roof on a commercial building. Yeah, so that that's a good point. I mean, it's not just the metal that's the roofing system, right? It's the entire assembly. So you kind of have to think, you know, of the entire a group of products that all go into that entire assembly. Things are constantly changing in the industry. You know, 10 years ago, uh, fire rated roof assemblies categorically weren't really part of the process. 
now, I mean, it's it's pretty dictated. New construction builds, uh, the envelope is super important. They're, it's required to do the air testing. You know, what is the breathability of the circ- circulation of the air within the building, which builds a lot of different things, maybe below the roof assembly, but we have to have knowledge of what's going on below the roof assembly so that we don't build something catastrophic. Even though our industry is archaic at times, uh, still have some guys rolling some marbles up in the sleeve. But we, there are a lot of sciences that, that are appropriate for, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're doing. You know, looking forward 5, 10, 15 years, um, there is a strong magnet pulling people towards, you know, the repurpose, reuse um, strategy and um, re-roof and retrofit. And we are positioned quite well as, you know, providing the metals that can meet that kind of a requirement. Again, another benefit of designing with metal is you may have a client that has a, a structure with good bones, as they say, and but it is time to bring it into the 21st century. And so the either a complete true re-roof or the retrofit, our systems are a wonderful match and consideration for that. Agreed. Yeah. And that's something we hadn't talked up to this point is, uh, you know, renovations and design for you know, a re-roof or in this case, a roof over. So I want to thank you guys uh, for the information you've shared with us about uh, designing a metal roof. If you have any questions, please reach out to Sheffield Metals. Um, Lori and Dave and the whole team would be happy to answer any questions and help you through every step of the process. Comment down below with any other questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.